Red Film Radio, I'm David Martos. We are live from the Mostra di Venezia, edition 77. Wow, 77, this special wow. year, 2020. And we're here with actress Hiyama Bass, one of the protagonists of Gaza Mon Amour from the Nasser Brothers in Horizonte section. Hiyam, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure and, and, and it's an honor. And, and you were telling me off camera, it's, it's really difficult to get here, to get to Venice in these difficult times, right? I mean, it's not really that difficult because you get in the plane and you come here. It's just like whatever is happening, like human-wise, with the COVID, right? With the virus is, is just like crazy how like our whole world had changed, you know, and our lives really. I mean, like we're doing a photo call with masks like covering our faces. It's <laughs> What's just the point? like I even <laughs> saw people in the airport yesterday. I couldn't recognize them because of this, you know, yeah. like and like it's if you put something on the head and the mask, you're just like a different person. <laughs> But I mean, we're trying to um, we're trying to, you know, exist really despite this virus and trying to keep. Of course, we have to keep you know, that the, the distanciation and we have to keep, like, we have to think about the other one to be safe, really, yeah, you know, more than thinking about ourselves, you know. Yeah. I, I really don't, like, I'm not afraid of catching it, but I'm afraid of giving it, if I have it, giving it to someone who is really, like, humble or weak or, and just, like, maybe consciously knowing that I caused, like, a, a, a problem or a death to someone with just, like, you know, Yeah. Would never leave my system, really, in mm. a way. That's one of the discoveries of this quarantine and this pandemic. You, we have to look after other people. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Which is, yeah. Did you spend the quarantine in Paris? I mean, I've been in Paris all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Gaza Mon Amour is, uh, I would say, a love story in a strange, in a weird location uh, in, in Palestine, which is... Um, We know, we've seen you in, in many films, we've seen many films. It's still going under very difficult uh, circumstances, a situation which is very hard. And maybe with the pandemic and, and other stuff, we still keep forgetting about what's happening there. Yeah, I think we forgot. Completely. You, I, I don't think we keep forgetting, I think we forgot. I think really the whole world with... Basically, the COVID now, Syria before, you know, yeah. the war in Syria before, whatever, like, whatever comes into the world, like, as a new catastrophe, basically, makes you forget what existed before. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I think we forgot, really, about Gaza and the Gaza people. Mm -hmm. I really believe we just, like, I mean, individuals who have been fighting for different human rights for the Gaza people or people who are involved politically, yes, they are still working, of course, and they would never leave whatever they're doing to make Gaza maybe feel better or be better. But uh, the, the, the world and the, the larger opinion of the world had, yeah, forgot about Gaza, of course. Mm. When I was watching the film last night, I was thinking, maybe this is an intelligent approach to the thing, because we are watching a rom-com somehow, a, a romantic comedy uh, set in Gaza, and the situation gets to us without being a gritty and heavy movie. It's no. a very light movie. Exactly. I think this is really something that I think the Nasser brothers uh, got matured cinematographically talking into, mm -hmm. uh, where they, I think they're, they've been, you know, like every, every newly director, like they search their their way into telling their stories and i think in, in this movie I, i mean i was involved in their first degradé and uh, it's it, it's a it's a very fragile baby i would say yeah. degradé and this one is just like i think got a little bit more uh their of what they really want to do like and what they're capable of doing their style yeah. their signature is there um and yeah it is it is a love story in a in a in a locality in a in a location that they really know very well and every character that they imagined every detail you see even visually in the movie it's something they are very familiar with mm. 
Uh, it's carefully crafted. I, I, I noticed exactly. the details. Right? But they are very meticulous as yeah. well, like as, as artists, which is really great and which maybe makes them look sometimes as difficult. Okay. And for me, it's not difficulty. It's just being really precise because you just know what you want to put in your frame mm -hmm. in order to make the movie your own and that you would not feel after seeing it, you know, like... A, after doing it, you don't want to feel like a, a strange buddy to you. So it's like the movie for me is a continuity of the two brothers and their relationship mm -hmm. and and their knowledge of their home city or home camp yeah. because they from a camp in the city and from their uh, political and social background. Mm. So everything is there, as you said, you know, this is what's really interesting about the movie. Everything is there, but at the same time, at the same time, the way they put it out to the public, it's the way they tell you their stories, mm. you know? And I think this is really where they succeeded in this movie. It's like the way they tell you the story, the, 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 the way they, they design the movie, it's exactly the way they just like, in real life, they would tell you a story where they don't drag you towards tears or towards laughter yeah, or towards whatsoever. They just like say it with whatever they are, yeah. with the love that they have to cinema. They just offer you a, a pearl, you know? Yeah, it is. Um, speaking about the relationship between actors and directors, you were describing the Nasser brothers. Uh, you've been around to many uh, set uh, locations and, and, and filming sets now. How can you tell the difference between good and bad directors? How do you notice, well, this, this guy is good, this girl is bad? Um, I mean, let you... me just correct something because I never say good or bad. Okay, I, or maybe th this guy works for me or not. Okay. No, exactly. It's like, am I capable of working or I'm not capable of working out some? Sometimes you know that the connection is not really right. And um, I don't think it's about the person only. It's about the relationship you make with the director as, a, as an actor. Your body of work maybe does not go with certain body of work from the other side, okay. you know? So I think it's about how this chemistry really works. And, and with some, yeah, it doesn't work. It's exactly like real life, you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're obliged to deal with certain people that you have no connection with, but like you have to deal with them because you're supposed to deal with them concerning certain problem or certain thing that you have to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But once it's over, it's over, you know? And you <laughs> don't necessarily uh, keep like a, a specific, uh, like... Uh, you know, a, a sweet memory of it. It's just like, it was there and it's part of your past and that's it, you move on. Yeah. And I think it's the same with directors, really. Some of them, yes, you work with and you move on, you know? Yeah, yeah. and what lights ahead for you? I mean, are you going to shoot any movies with these new conditions, with the masks and the tests? Uh, at the moment, I don't know, really, because like movies have, like the movies I'm um, kind of offered right now, they're being, are going to Postponed. be done later. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the thing that I have to go back now, it's like the shows, the TV shows that, like one of them had stopped in the middle, yeah. uh, called The Old Man uh, for FX in the States. And we have to go into third season with Succession uh, for HBO. And this is like maybe in the fall. And uh, the third uh, season of Rami as well, that has to happen just after. Yeah. So like we're trying <laughs> to kind of see really how things would go. Speaking about uh, TV series, they, they were like a, like a salvation package during the lockdown, right? We were yeah. saved by TV series and movies, of course, but by platforms. How do you put yourself in this debate we are going on now with between um, you know, cinemas and, and platforms. Do you think cinemas are going to survive this crisis? I hope so. I mean, I don't know what I think because I don't know that I have enough elements to think. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there is like a, a, a speed that is catching up with us that sometimes is out of our control. Uh, we've been talking about TV uh, shows replacing cinema since since years now. Yeah, it has not been happening since really. Silent cinema. Exactly. Yeah. 
it just killed yes some kind of like uh, independent sort of theaters or you know initiatives uh, and I think it's sort of coming back like the dilemma of of the TV and the cinema that existed before I think is looked at in a different way now okay. because I think the COVID had forced us to think of how to make it smaller not bigger because you know all these complexes of cinema and whatever I have nothing against but they stole somehow the artisanal way of 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 making movie or showing movies you know screening movies yeah. and now maybe we have to think back about these kind of like little houses where you just like not hundreds and five hundreds and thousands of people kind of getting into like you know a stream of 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 a crowd going to see a movie but you know and there is choices that are done with that you know your personal choice to go to a small cinema it's something that it's it's almost like choosing to go to a natural place and just like maybe eat a fruit from the garden <laughs> you see what i mean yeah. and i think i think humanly i hope we didn't forget the taste of that fruit and how good it is right so i think we're going smaller in in our lives because of the covid we're going smaller in a sin and not in a negative sense yeah, 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 yeah. smaller in the sense of yeah i hope so i mean i hope so i would love to think so i'd love to dream so you know hmm. and um I mean, yeah, as I said, you know, like the, 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 the speed of, of the technology and the speed of, of, of whatever comes to replace all these small, beautiful tastes that we yeah. did not forget, you know, is, is catching up with us. But I think at the same time, there is like the, the opposite movement, you know. It's a tension. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hema Bas, lead actress in Gaza Mon Amour. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for Thank being with so us much. today. Thanks. Thank you for being Thank with you. us. Thank you. This was an interview from the Mostra de Venezia. I'm David Martos, and this is Fred, the Festival Insider.